Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy. All right, so this video is going to be about questions to always ask on the car lot. All right, guys, so listen, here's what we're going to do. I want you to look at this. This clearly is a funnel. Notice the top. See how big the funnel is? It's wide open. That means they just got in the market. Down here, this is the bottom of the market, okay? Marker sucks. Check this out. So as we're at, at the bottom of the market down here, this customer is ready to buy. Like this second, they're ready to buy. Now these people will buy today, and this could be on the phone, or it could be in person. These people are ready to buy, but they just got in the market, which means they don't know exactly what they want yet. They think they know what they want, but they don't really know what they want. Let me give you an example. So a guy comes in and says he's looking for a Ford F-150. Well, I'll ask him a simple question. I say, hey man, those are great trucks. Have you driven one yet? Based on, he said, no, I haven't driven one yet, but, I, but I've had one for a while and it's been a good truck. All right, stop. Did you hear that question? I said, awesome. Have you driven one yet? How many times do you guys go to show a car and you've never asked if they've driven one yet? And if they did drive one, I would say, cool man, how'd it drive? So what'd you think of it? I wanna hear what they have to say. Based on what people say will allow me to go where I wanna go next. I may even change up the way I'm gonna respond based on the way that they answered that question. Now, down here, I ask a guy, hey, have you driven an F-150? He says, yeah. I say, great man, how'd it drive? It drove great. I say, awesome man, have you driven a lot of them? Or did you just drive one? He said, well, I've driven five or six of them. Beautiful. Why haven't you purchased one yet? Think about it. Some of the biggest questions that you'll ask will allow you to get the answers that you need to guide the customer to the next place. Do you want to go into the same trap that the salesperson went into at the last dealership? No, but you could go there accidentally by not asking questions. So I asked the guy, I said, hey man, uh, you know, guys like, hey man, I'm looking for an F-150. I'm like, beautiful, man, those are great trucks. Hey, have you had the chance to drive one of the newer F-150s yet that you're wanting to look at? No, I haven't. Okay, that guy's wide open. I might be able to sell that guy right now, a Chevy, a Ford. Hell, I sell the guy a Toyota. I sell the guy anything. The guy hasn't driven anything, which means he has an idea in his head that he would probably like to own a Ford. That guy is wide open and just got into the buying funnel. This guy is easy to close. This guy down here, he's niched down to a certain car. He knows what he wants, but he hasn't purchased yet because of a reason. So what I do is I say, hey man, so yeah, no, Ford F-150s are great trucks, man. Hey, look, have you had the chance to drive one yet? No, I haven't. Okay, boom, wide open. Yes, I have. Beautiful, man. What'd you think about the way they drove? Well, they were nice. Cool, did you just drive one or have you driven a couple of them? Well, I've drove five or six. Man, so you love the way they drive. By the way, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm gonna serve you in the, in the highest level and I'm gonna give you world-class customer service. But so you want an F-150, obviously you've driven a couple of them, you love the way they drive. Let me ask you a question. Why haven't you purchased one yet? That question could be the question that no other salespeople out there had the courage to ask or I would say there's a difference between being prepared and truly being prepared. They didn't even know how to ask that question. You were able to surface an answer that was the key to the entire car deal. You know what he says? Well, they didn't give me enough for my trade. I didn't like the salesman. So all the automatically I say, hey man, well, number one, I just want to tell you Ford F-150s are a great truck. You're going to love the truck that I've got. You're going to love it. I'm positive of it. And secondly, I just want to remind you that I'm not that guy. I understand that sometimes buying a car can be a little bit difficult. It doesn't have to be that way here, and it's not gonna be that with that way with us. In the end, you're gonna love me so much, you're gonna to wanna to adopt me. I promise you, I'm gonna take great care of you. I'm gonna say, every car you buy for the rest of your life, sir, I'm gonna earn your business. Thank you for being here. Boom, now I know that I have to make this guy L-O-V-E, love me, because he didn't buy because of the salesperson. Also, it could be the guy says, hey, the trade-in wasn't high enough. Now I need to think about this right out the gate. I'm gonna get into numbers with this guy down the road. So going into the trade, going into the worksheet, I know that this guy's sensitive on his trade. 
and I won't ask them, well, hey man, what did you want for it? You could ask that to gather the information, but my goal is to play the exact opposite. It was to, to set myself up and be more prepared than the salesman at the other store. And what would that look like? I would say, okay guys, so look, so obviously you love the F-150. I'm gonna get some numbers from my manager. Now look, you told me earlier the reason why you hadn't purchased yet is because people haven't given you enough money for your trade-in. Look, I'd like to ask you a couple questions so I can fully understand and make sure that we don't have that problem here, okay? We're high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family. We'll always be the best on numbers. I got two questions. Number one, my general manager gives top dollar for vehicles that have been serviced the best. Would you mind sharing everything that you've done on your vehicle within the last two years so I can share it with them? And that way we can make sure we get full credit for everything you've done to it. And you're gonna start writing it down. Okay, cool. So you did the tires, awesome. How much did those cost? $2,000. What else did you do? All right, you did the AC. How much did that cost? $2,000. And I start going down and I start adding this stuff up and listen, here's the idea of it. What if it's on the other end? And by the way, I'm gonna show you how to use this to leverage it. But what if it's on the other end and the guy says, hey man, you know what? I haven't spent any money on the last two years. I say, cool man. So you owned it for two years. And you're saying you spent no money because it's such a great car, right? And guess what I do at that point? I'm gonna fish for some things that need to be done to it now. So I'll say, hey, listen, so here's the deal. My service manager, his job is to make these vehicles like new for the next customers that are gonna own them. I have a question, I wanna ask you something, all right? We sold the car to a lady about a month ago. She was driving down the road. The windshield wipers quit working on her when it was raining. When it went through the service inspection, the windshield wipers were working. But the customer knew that sometimes they would stop working, but they were working when the technician checked it out. How would we know, right? Let me ask you a question. So we could ensure that that never happened again. My service manager has asked me, would you mind sharing if this car was gonna be sold to your sister or you were to come buy it yourself? Nobody knows your car better than you. Would you mind sharing everything that needs to be done to it to get it ready for the next owner? What would that be? And I painted a picture I told the story and now I'm asking the questions. He said, well, I would definitely say you need to do the tires. I'd say, okay, cool, tires. And what else? Well, I would do the windshield, okay? And then I would fix that bumper. Awesome, so tires, windshield, and bumper, if you were to sell it to someone else, beautiful. Now listen, I am not battling and getting stuck on the trade-in game and giving him a number yet. What I'm doing is that I'm setting up the cell. The cell can't be closed until it's open. And how do you open it? You open it by asking great questions. You know, I see so many salespeople that don't know how to present and then how to defend. And when I go to present this guy's trade, and by the way, this all came about by me asking a question when they got into the dealership. Go back and rewatch this video and you'll see how we got here. I ask questions early on that allow me to set up the cell where I want it to go later on. Remember to remember to hear everything that your customers say. Your customers won't tell you everything. You need to ask specific design questions to get the information that you need to know to take the cell where you want it to go. And if it doesn't go there, it's because you didn't set it up to go there. If you're training with me, you'll always learn how to set up the cell properly. Now, as I've taught you in this video about questions, watch when I go to present the pencil. I say, hey sir, great news. Boom, 18 grand for your trade, sign here. You love the F-150? Let's get it wrapped up, put it in your driveway. Sign here. Guy says, hey man, I told you. Just like down the road, they weren't getting enough for my trade. I said, hey, I totally understand. Look, what we did is that we did some research. And remember a minute ago, you told me you hadn't spent any money on your car in the last two years. What we know, since you hadn't spent any money, there's 15,000 pieces working on a machine. If you haven't done anything in two years, you think those machine pieces are getting wore down and gonna need to be replaced and things are gonna need to get fixed? Yes. Those are things that we're gonna have to fix when we go to service it. You see how I turn that back? Or let's say he says, Andy, I need more for my trade. I say, hey, I totally understand. Look, sir, I know that you want $18,000 or we're giving you 18,000 and you said you want a little more for it. Look, remember how you spent 2,000 on the tires, 2,000 on the AC? Look, the fact is, is that the longer you keep your car, it gives it time for more opportunity for something else to go wrong for you to even spend more money on your car. So the fact that we're giving you the 18 grand right now, you're getting top dollar for your trade. And also on top of that, if you were to drive out of here and keep it a little bit longer, let's say even another day longer, it gives it time for something else to break for you to even spend more money out of your pocket just like you did here. Do you see what I'm saying? My argument, right, is not arguing that his car's not worth it. I'm actually using money justification to justify why trading it right now and getting this money 
is actually top dollar for the vehicle and I gathered information early on to bring into it. Now, this isn't about presenting the trade-in objection. Don't get it confused. I'm just talking to you about how asking questions early on will allow you to apply it later on towards your negotiations, your closing, or directing the customer towards the right car. This funnel, never forget it. When you meet a customer, they're either wide open, they just got in, or they're niched down and they're ready to buy, but there's a reason why they haven't bought yet. You have to be able to ask them the question. All right guys, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about this for a second. Did you learn some information during this video that increased your sales skill? I'm sure you have, especially if you're listening. Some of you guys, you're trying to retain it, you need to watch the video again. Watch it five times. Listen to everything that I say, write it down. If you really wanna become great at selling, you have to write it down. Everything that's written will be retained. If you don't write it down and you merely just watch the video, you'll never understand how I made 700 grand a year selling cars. It's physically impossible. My goal is to teach you all the skill that I know. I have tons of courses. I do live master closer seminars every single month. My YouTube videos are like baby food. They're just training that I give you, my lowest level of training, so that you can see a better version of yourself. If you want to go to the next level, I'd love to learn about you. I'd love to help you go to the next level. I'd love to help you scale up. When you go to work, you trade your time for money. Isn't it time to trade your time for three times as much money? Do this, shoot me a text message. Just shoot me a text, tell me what's going on. I'll help you get to that next level. I'd love to crush it with you. 918-210-0254. Guys, 918-210-0254. Shoot me a text message. I'd love to help you kill it, crush it, and go to the next level. See you guys soon.